Hello and welcome to this AE Basics tutorial in which we're continuing to look at text creation and animation within After Effects. In this next tutorial we're going to look at some of the other options that we've got here and what they all mean. Now so far we've created a bit of text, at the moment it has no fill but it has a stroke. I'm actually going to give it a fill so I'm going to click here and I'm going to choose a ready colour and click OK. And we can see that we've got a stroke and I'm just going to click on the stroke here, you can see that it's black. Again, if I click a second time, I can change it to any colour that I like. So if I wanted to make it a nice dark blue, I could do that as well. Click on it. And if I want to change the size of the stroke, make sure that you have all the letters selected, obviously, by double-clicking on the layer. And you'll see just here, we've got the ability to change the size of our stroke. However, we also have options right next to the size of our stroke. At the moment, it says Fill Over Stroke. And if I click the drop-down here, We've got fill over stroke for individual letters, or stroke over fill for individual letters, or fill over stroke for all letters, or stroke over fill. So what do I mean? Let's look at these from the all letters perspective. So this will give us the same effect, all fills over all strokes. You don't really see what the difference is, but notice that my stroke is 13 pixels wide. Let's make it an even number, let's say 10. So it's 10 pixels wide, and what we're saying is effectively, that the fill, the red, is filling itself all the way up to the edge and then the stroke is additional to it. Now the stroke is 10 pixels wide but the fill is over the top of it so therefore effectively what I'm seeing is 5 pixels of stroke outside of the fill. However if I click this drop down and go down to all strokes over all fills you'll see that suddenly the stroke becomes a lot thicker. You can see all of the 10 pixels, which is actually far too much for this particular piece of text, showing because the stroke is overwriting the fill, therefore the 5 inside are also showing, as well as the 5 outside of the actual fill area or, or the letter size and shape. So I'm going to go back to all fills over all strokes, just double click the layer if it doesn't update immediately, and there we have it looking quite nice with a 10 point stroke, but not being overwhelming as it would be if we had all strokes over all fills. So those are the different options. If you want to work on individual characters, just select a couple of characters and you can use these two here. So what about these other options up here? Well, this here is called leading and it goes back to the days of print where the printmaster who was actually putting together the print would actually add additional layers of lead between each row of text to space them out. So this is really talking about the spacing of one row over the other. So if we can click and drag, we can change how it looks so we can make it very widely spaced or have it really close. It's worth saying that the spacing can make a big difference to the emotional feel of a text. If something's really close, it can give a sense of confinement or anxiety. Whereas if things are quite widely spaced, it can make people feel a lot more comfortable and relaxed. So you just need to play around with your text. It's worth spending a lot of time playing with text because you can get some superb results. You also have the drop down where you can choose a particular one, but as you can see, we've, we've gone way beyond any of that are chosen. Plus you have the auto button, click the auto button, it sets it as it thinks should be set for the natural setting for the font, but again we're overriding it to get a slightly more anxious feel to the text by moving the words close to each other with this leading setting. Okay, so what about this one here? This is called kerning and it's to do with how close the letters are to each other. However, if you hover over it, it says set the kerning between two characters and clearly we've got all the characters selected at the moment. So you thought that kerning looks as if it's greyed out, but actually if you drop down here, you'll see that you've got three options. Zero, which is what it is by default, and metrics and optical. And metrics is often the default setting where it tends to sort of set every character a standard space away from the next. Whereas optical is a little bit more tweaked. The creator of the font might have said, I think that these letters look better when they're closer to each other. And nine times out of ten, in my opinion, optical looks better than metrics. So if I click optical, there's a very slight shift in how the characters move towards each other. But I think that can make quite a nice difference to how the text looks. Go back to metrics, and then go back to optical. You can see the changes that take place. 
Now if I then want to change how all the letters are relating to each other, I can use tracking. And again, you've got drop downs for tracking, so you can make the characters really close, or you can make the characters really wide apart, or again, you can scrub. This is the overall, all of the characters together. Again, you can do this with a couple of characters that's selected. But if you want to do kerning between two characters, say we think here this, this E and this R might look better even closer, I can click between them, and then I can either drag, where it says optical, and pull them closer, or if you're a keyboard user, you might want to use the Alt button. So hold the Alt button and use your right and left arrows to actually start to pull characters a bit closer or a bit further away. Now it's worth spending time with these. It's worth spending time getting your text looking just right because it can make an awful lot of difference to the feel of your production when your text looks really well formatted and really well set. It just sets a standard and says, I know what I'm doing and this is going to be a quality production. So spend time playing with these settings. Now this final section down here is to do with how the individual characters look. So if I was to say choose this A here and uh, zoom out a little bit, we can actually change the scale of an individual letter. You could do it with all of them if you like, but you can make it a lot taller or you can make it a lot shorter by simply playing with this particular function. So this is just the scale of a letter height-wise and scale width, so you can make it look a lot bigger. If you want that medieval look where you've got a massive letter right at the beginning of a paragraph, you can play with it here and get that look. And then this one here is what we've talked about before, superscript or subscript. It's about shifting items up. So if we had E equals MC squared, let's say, uh, click at the end here, we've got after, and let's say we wanted to say after squared. So we've got a 2 there. If I select the 2, I can reduce its font size. Then if I want, I can use the baseline shift just to make it look like it's squared. So after squared effects. Or again, we can do it the other way, that subscript taking it below or above. So that's what that particular one is about. And this last one here, which is called something like Sumi, I'm not sure particularly how you pronounce it, Sumi if I'm wrong, no don't, um, <laughs> is to do with Asian characters, often with Chinese, Japanese, Korean and things. You need different spacing around the characters to make it look and flow properly. And that's what this particular setting is. And seeing I'm not dealing with that language, you can have a play, it just basically changes the space around the character. And it does make subtle differences, even with Roman text, you can see it does make a little bit of difference. And it's not one that we would generally use for Roman text, English text, like this. So I'm just going to click and select that to and hit delete. So there we go. That's how we can format text. The only other thing to say, and I'm going to double click to select the whole thing here, is we also have a paragraph panel. We can have justified one way, justified the other, or justified in the middle. But then if you do justify it, you're going to need to select your arrow tool. Don't, by the way, use the keyboard shortcut, because if you do V, you overwrite everything. So um, you don't want that, so you want to edit undo, and you're going to have to use the edit undo to get that, and then select it with your mouse, and you can drag it around to the appropriate place, and play around with it as you need to. One final thing. I'm not going to use this particular font, so I'm going to double click, and I'm going to go through a font that's actually got fairly sharp edges to it. So let's just move to one that's got fairly sharp finishes. That seems to be a good one. If we look at Opera, so I'm going to zoom in a bit. I want you to look at the end of these letters because we can change the way the lines finish. If you go to the panel menu, now this is the panel menu, the lines with the drop down arrow. If you click on the panel menu and you go down to line join, you see that you've got different options. If I go to mitre, you can see it gives a sort of a point at the end. Whereas if I go to the other options, I can go to line join, I can go to round, because sort of a rounded feel to the end. And again, the last option was the one that we had before, which is bevel, which I think on this particular one doesn't look quite so good. I think if I was going for any on this particular font, I would probably go for mitre, a nice sharp end. So the way that lines join, if you look at the end of each one of these here, are controlled not from inside the panel, but from the panel menu, and then down to line join, and then you've got the mitre, round, and bevel options there. In fact, I think actually, you know what, I think round looks pretty good on this particular font. So that's how we can create text and we can format text. Next we're going to look at how to make the text look even better with some wonderful options inside the layer menu. My name's Andrew Davis. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thank you for watching.